It's a beautiful thing about building your own home is things get easier day by day. Every day there's small improvement. Giving all you own souls, raising up a new world where everyone is sacred, every life accounted for. Grow your garden, find your tribe, let your hearts burn inside. Hello everybody, this is Richard here. I am the Community Director here at Terraform Together. Coming to you with a new video today um, because we just celebrated our two-year anniversary out here. Uh, we started this homestead two years ago with nothing. Um, we didn't have a road to come in, we didn't have anything at all. And I wanted to do this video to kind of give you guys an idea of what can be done in such a little time with limited budget out in a really hard environment. Um, the des desert out here is really difficult. If you haven't watched our previous videos, go back and watch those. Um, those are our early days. It's about our first year, uh, some highlights of what we went through uh, to get to where we are today. If you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe. Um, all of these projects that you're seeing here, uh, we're going to be getting into over the next couple months in our video series coming out every week. Um, we're finally out of survival mode out here, so we're able to go back and edit that video, um, put stuff together, and just show you guys kind of what we've been up to and the process that we've been going through. I think a good place to start is Baby Blue, our RV. This was the original shelter that was out here. I bought this RV uh, right before we bought the land, and basically it was our shelter until uh, the big tiny house moved out here. Since moving out of the RV and into the big tiny house, this has become one of our eco-resident dwellings. Uh, we actually split this into a duplex type unit, um, having a bed on one side, a bed and a kitchen on the other, and can house a couple people in here all year round uh, comfortably. One of the first projects we worked on while we were out here is building a community space. So we knew that we wanted to build a space where people could come, learn how to build, live, uh, get away from city life and experience something new. Uh, as part of that, running a community, it was important for us to set up a kitchen, set up some shade structures, set up a space for people to live and exist uh, somewhat comfortably. We've come a long ways. Uh, our first winter out here, we had just a simple countertop um, that everybody cooked on. Over the summer, we built a new kitchen um, that's still a work in progress like everything out here. But now we have four burner stove, um, we do have water tanks, we have things like that for people to live somewhat comfortably in this outdoor space. One of the first structures we brought onto the property was my second tiny home. It's a 54 square foot tiny house on wheels that I lived out of for a year and a half traveling all over the country. Originally this was built with one inch of insulation because the thought process was if the weather wasn't good, it needs to move. Now that it's in its permanent home where we get hot hots and we get cold colds, we're working on cobbing the outside, plastering it, extending the roof line, and doing an interior renovation because after years of living on the road, years of abuse, um, it's needed a makeover. Uh, this cob will act as insulation um, to keep the house uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Really excited to have this as one of our eco residence um, dwellings and a comfortable space for somebody to live. All of our systems out here run totally off of solar. We are completely off grid and no city power whatsoever. Over here in camp, we have a 1200 watt system and a 250 amp hour, 24 volt lithium ion battery. That runs our RV, um, tiny house, and our kitchen community area, and will eventually run our hyper Adobe tiny home build. This is our solar shed. Um, we are finally at the point where um, we we're able to kind of make us make things aesthetic and make them more functional. We use a lot of cob, which is a mix of clay, sand, and straw, rock work, things from the land to help insulate, beautify, and build with. Um, our core philosophy here is build with what you have um, and make things cool. 
One thing that I think is really important um, and that we try and share with people is not only our successes, but our failures. Um, when I first moved to this property, I was so excited to be a homesteader, to grow my own food, to live self-sufficient, to you know do all of the things that homesteaders do. And as part of that, grow my own food. That didn't end very well. Um, so I spent a lot of money on greenhouses, on hydroponic systems, on importing soil, and just found that I am not good at growing things. <laughs> um, the environment we're in out here is super, super harsh, and all of the animals out here have it out for anything that's growing. And so we had javelinas, we had rats, we had bunnies, we had everything eat our food that we spent so much time growing, taking care of, all of that. I would still love to eventually be a homesteader that actually makes their own food and grows their own produce and things like that. But I've learned that's probably not my role in this community. And fortunately, we have some neighbors around here who that is their gift. And I think that's a really good lesson to know when you're homesteading is to be friends with your neighbors and work as a community because each of you have different skills. I'm very good at building. I'm very good at technical stuff as far as like solar and electrical and things like that go. But don't ask me to keep your plants alive because it's not going to happen. After getting our electricity in, after getting our camp somewhat situated, one of the next most important things that we worked on was water. Um, so out here in the Sonoran Desert, we are actually considered a very wet desert, which is great for rainwater collection. The wells out here are not really accessible. Um, it's very expensive to drill. There's a lot of agriculture that's pulling more than they should out of the ground, draining our aquifers. So for me personally, in the community, well water was not really an option out here. Um, because of that, we are doing rainwater collection and eventually we'll get to the point where that is our total main source of water and hopefully we'll never have to get water delivery again. Even two years in, we're still getting water deliveries. We have two 2,500 gallon tanks totaling 5,000 gallons and a fill up of 4,000 gallons, not on build projects, um, will last us several months even with the community. We're very frugal with our water, we're very respectful of it because water is life, um, especially out here in the desert. This project that you see behind me is our pump house build. Um, this is a great example of kind of the process we go through with building things out here. Um, we start very simply, we start with just, you know, what is the easiest thing for us to get up and live and functional? And then as time goes on, we'll harden things up, build it a little more solid, build it with earth, build it with rock, make it beautiful and make it a functional piece of art on the property. When we started this project, um, it was just a simple wooden shed four by eight foot um, metal roof, very simple and clean, um, but not the most functional thing in the world because we do get really hot days. We do get below freezing at night. And so by cobbing it this year, we have insulated our shed and protected all of our water. The other big thing we have going on here is our shower system. So our community shower space. Uh, this has definitely taken big leaps and strides this last summer um, because last winter it was a simple outdoor shower with no hot water. The community of people who are living here more often than not used my shower over the winter because it does get really cold out here. The nice thing is this winter we have hot water, we have it insulated, we have it cobbed over, we have a proper door. Um, and that's just kind of to show you an evolution of how things change out here from bare bones survival mode to something that's nice and beautiful. With a lot of the projects you see out here, we are in various stages of completion. The way the permitting system works in Cochise County is we have three years to build the exteriors of whatever we want. Um, once that three years is up, we can't build the exterior anymore, but we can take all the time we want on the inside. So a lot of the structures we're building out here we're building the exterior, getting the inside just functional enough, knowing that we'll come back later to finish these projects out. One of the really important things for us out here was to be good stewards of this land. And part of that is restoring it to what it would be originally. 
Arizona is terrible with their grazing practices and the ranchers around this area are really disrespectful of the land, of their grazing processes, and really don't take care of their cows. So a lot of cows will push onto private people's lands, tear things up, destroy the natural environment. And so one of our first projects out here was creating rainwater harvesting systems. You can see behind me these rock piles and what this is doing is capturing our water during our monsoon so it can soak deeply into the earth and help regenerate some of our native grasses and native plants. Uh, we are planting native trees out here um, to help the environment, to give habitat to the native species. Our little Palo Verde here has grown so much in the last two years. I am so excited to see what things are going to look like in the next couple of years, uh, 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Whether or not I'm here, um, we've made a long lasting impact by just digging holes and building basins and putting rocks in strategic places to capture the precious, precious rainwater that we have out here. One of the projects that was a lot of fun to build um, that is continuing to be built out here is this behind me, our bunker bus. This is our community space, and during the winter, it acts as our overflow bunkhouse for our residents. Doing something really original and unique is kind of what we do out here. Um, I often find myself feeling like a 12-year-old boy with a source of income because who wouldn't want to build a bunker underground school bus? And we've been working on this. It's been part of the property for over a year now. Um, we've had no issues with rain. We've had no issues with any anything getting into the bus, even during our biggest monsoon season. Bus acts as a good community space. We have a lot of our residents come that are either in RVs or van life or tiny housers. And so having a gathering space that's indoors, that's not your van or not your living space is really nice. Uh, this has been another opportunity for us to experiment. Um, we did our first drywall in the bus. I will never do that again. Um, we've been doing some concrete work um, and just really making it a comfortable, fun space for people to exist in, for people to hang out and just have a space where we can watch movies, um, you know, play games, uh, read a little office space, um, just kind of a multi-use building for everybody to hang out in. One of the things that's really cool about this community is we get a bunch of people coming in with different ideas and different thoughts and different wants and projects and things like that. Our Cobb oven here was one of the ideas that one of our community members brought to us. They really wanted to experiment and try it. I figured it was a low cost um, build um, and so why not let's try it. And actually this has become one of the favorite pieces on the property. When we do big build days um, we'll have big cookouts and things like that makes amazing wood fire pizza in here for our holidays and it's just a place where everybody can gather eat a good meal um, that's cooked in a traditional fashion that goes back thousands and thousands of years this oven is built with just our local clay local straw local uh, sand uh, we did use an earth bag technique um, with some of our leftover bags from the root cellar for our base um, some wine bottles for some decoration and then basically just built it all up, lit it up, and makes some amazing food for our community members. Probably one of the biggest gains out on this property was this house behind me. This is my first tiny home. You can go on this channel and find some videos, some tours, things like that of this home. I built this back in 2015. It was the first thing I ever built. In April of 2020, we moved the home out to this land and it made it its permanent home. Uh, we've skirted it, made patios for it, hooked it up to an off-grid system because it used to be an on-grid system. This home has been a great improvement over living out of the RV just because it's more insulated, has a proper kitchen, um, is much bigger and more spacious, and often ends up being our community spaces when we have group meals and things like that. So it's a great addition to the property. Um, I'm very, very appreciative that, you know, my time out here while I build the big home, I can live in something that is so comfortable and so well built. This is our first really, really big ambitious project on the property, and it is our root cellar. 
This is built out of 1,400 earth bags packed with our native soil, wetted down, tamped, barbed wire in between them, stacked. This project took around nine months to complete, but it was a critical part of our community because we needed a place where we could have produce, where we could have food storage and things of that nature that was temperature regulated. Um, out here, we have very limited electricity because our solar systems are very small and just just enough to get us through you know, what we need in the day. To expand a solar system to be able to run air conditioning and things like that would have been extremely, extremely costly. So instead, we built this underground root cellar that keeps things very well regulated. We get down to about maybe the 50s um, in there during the winter and about the low 70s when it's 105 degrees outside. This gives us a pantry so we can store food, we can store produce, and we can feed the entire community that we have here, which has been up to 15 people. So it's been a great learning experience for us. We have learned that we never want to do earth bag again after experimenting with this and experimenting with the Hyper Adobe, which I'll take you to next. The structure behind me is our current build and our current big project. It is a Hyper Adobe Tiny Home test house, basically building a shed-like structure to test and experiment and try different techniques before we start on the main home. We really wanted to take a couple months to really dial in our build, dial in our processing, dial in you know, what can we do and what can't we do with these bags and what is the most efficient way to go about these things. Uh, we've been working on this project for around six weeks now, um, doing about 20 build days in that time. Uh, in that time, we've gone up seven feet, um, learned a whole lot of things and are very, very close to getting our loft in probably within the next week or two, which is really exciting. Total budget wise, we're looking at around $7,000 and it could easily be comfortable for somebody living in full time and something that will last easily two, three, four hundred years from now. So this home is built solid. It's built with the environment in mind and it's built to work with the environment. One of the beautiful things about being out here for two years now is that we are out of survival mode and we are able to take some time to create really beautiful things that are totally permanent, that will last hundreds and hundreds of years um, out here and use it as a tool to educate people to live off grid, to build their own home or just go back to their normal lifestyle and have a little bit more confidence in fixing some plumbing or fixing a piece of drywall or building a table, whatever that is. Uh, our eco residents, we get all different types of people and different people get different experiences out here. But by using reclaimed materials, by using our natural building techniques, by using the earth from the ground to build a home, we inspire people to realize that that is possible and that you don't have to go through the big box stores and that you don't have to build in traditional ways to have a home that's really better built than most on the market today. To wrap up this video, I'm coming to you from what we lovingly call the pit out here. This is a 12 foot deep hole with a spiral staircase um, in the middle of our property. Eventually this will become our main home. Uh, we're building a basement down here, a cylinder above this, and then a small cylinder to the side as a bedroom. We're using a greenhouse for our bathroom and basically creating a home where we can be totally off grid. We can take cool air from underground in our basement, pump it up into our main living area. We can take the hot air from our greenhouse and pump it into the living areas um, and basically creating a home that is as zero impact to the environment as possible. This home will be our earth bag, um, hyper adobe build to be specific. Um, it's all our native soil, um, our native sand, and just a little bit of cement to hold everything together in a very minimal style building technique that will last hundreds and hundreds of years. This wraps up our tour. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to learn more about what we're doing, be sure to subscribe. All of these projects that you saw today, we are slowly putting out videos every week. Um, we are hoping to start this house build uh, in March of 2022. 
fingers crossed. Um, and we'll be posting stuff regularly. So be sure to subscribe, check out our, our website. Um, if you're interested in the eco residency program, we are currently taking applications as of the launch of this video. Um, always check our website for up-to-date information on that. And thank you for watching. I hope this is inspiring. I hope you go and build something cool.